Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome to the big show, week nine. We're closing in on the postseason, and it feels like a good time to start channeling some holiday traditions like the wisdom of peanuts, those specials we all loved as kids. I don't see a pumpkin patch that can be more sincere than this one. You can look around. There's not a sign of hypocrisy, nothing but sincerity as far as the eye can see. And nothing but sincere excellence from Samantha Smith and her team keeping the first and 10 website rolling, which brings us to this week's game of the week, a battle for River Ridge supremacy. Cave Spring with a former Salem star head coach returning to his alma mater to try and unseat the perennial power. Now, Eric Johnson was in Salem to see if maybe we're a little early on this. It's just the middle of year right, two. Right, maybe just a little bit, just but you know what? Cave Spring had a lot of momentum coming into this mm -hmm. one, knocking off Patrick Henry last week. So Nick Leftwich's squad, they were pumped up for this one, but they ran into a Salem squad coming off a bye week. That's dangerous. Okay, ouch. That's very dangerous. Yeah. Let's get you the highlights in Salem. Senior night for not only the football team and the band, but the beloved cheerleaders as well. Salem got it cranked up early. Quarterback Deron Wilson floated a nice one down the field to Josiah Moyer. Sorry, you got Moss. 21-yard touchdown right there. 7 nothing lead. Cave Spring looking to respond. Landon Altizer rolls out, steps up, has a man, but picked off by Josiah Persinger, who said, think again. It led to this JV on Jones, two-yard touchdown trot. PAT is missed, so it's 13-0. The run game was very giving tonight. Peyton, catch me if you can. Lewis gets to the edge, takes off 75 yards to the promised wow. land. Spartans led 28-0 at halftime. Second half, how about more Lewis? This time, he gets to that right side yet again. 54 yards to the house. Another Spartans touchdown. Nick Left was trying to dial up something late for the Knights. Carter Jeffords in at quarterback. Somehow gets this ball to a streaking Owen Sweeney. Mm. And oh, baby, sweep into the end zone. 70-yard touchdown. But nothing else with the Knights tonight. Salem's defense meaner than your third-grade bully. Spartans oh. get the win, 42-7. to seven. These young men always play hard. You know, and we constantly talk about reinforce, focus and discipline, allow you to execute in a ball game. And, and we want to play with great physicality all the time. The Salem football, you are who you are and you ain't who you ain't. The same thing every week, you know, go in there, uh, build on the things that we did bad, you know, and go from there. Like defense, we take pride in our defense here at Salem. So, you know, that's our main thing is not to let people score and put points on the board. And that's the key takeaway from this one. Their offense, very potent, but Salem's defense is a thing of terror. It simply wreaked havoc tonight. And as Coach, Holt, Coach Holter mentioned there, in the words of Danny Green, they are who we thought they were. So the Spartans, <laughs> they're, they're here. They're ready to have it, Appy. I'll tell you what, their line play, too, Eric, was exemplary. They, it the, was. The big fellas up front getting it done for Salem. The other big dogs in the River Ridge colliding tonight, Christiansburg, who fell to Salem by six, and PH, who lost a cave by six. Uh, going against each other tonight. Let's get you out and have a look at PH. The fans were ready. Beginning of the fourth quarter, Curtis Altizer, he is ripping through right there, and we are in a one-touchdown game, but hold on. PH is going to answer. Joseph Beasley hooking up with Jazzy Kimbrough, and look at him. He's out there. He's up there, and he's down there, and it's 27-14 PH. A few plays later, Beasley again watched the pretty fake, and that is Chuck Webb for the big gainer. Oh, he is a rolling ball of butcher knives. Let's see him again. Beasley giving it to Webb, 34-14 PH, on their way to a 37-14 victory. Blacksburg at Hidden Valley tonight. Interesting matchup. Braden Moore trying to find a receiver, but Blacksburg's D up to the task. Thomas DeMassey with the big sack right there. Big fella celebrates. Braden Moore here. Nice completion to Joey Strong on the run. But it did not amount to anything. That said, end of the second quarter, Logan Pinnell to Ethan Carpa for the Bruins. Touchdown. They've got a lead seven to nothing. But Hidden Valley came back with four scores in the second half for a 28-7 victory. Thursday night, Graham over Pulaski, 41. 
to 14. The lead in the Three Rivers also up for grabs tonight. Interesting matchup. The high octane Bobcats at Winford Beals. Always fundamentally sound Buffaloes. Here we go. And it was senior night at the home of the Buffs. Pick it up with Radford up 7 0. Ryland Schwartzel to Caden Schwartzel. Big fella catches it, stretches on in. We've got a tie game. Bobcats respond. Landon Clark to Marcel Baylor. He's slicing into the zone. 14-7. Fourth and three situation for the buff. Schwartzel going to keep it himself to keep the sweep. I'll call my own number. It's lucky seven. He was into the zone long before that ball was punched out. It's 14-all. Radford coming back at you. Clark rolling, strolling, finding Parker Prelo, and he jukes on into the zone. This one came down to the final 15 seconds. Floyd County scored and went for two, and they didn't get it. 28-27, Radford victorious. The Spartans went at home, 42-14 over James River, and Allegheny the Mountaineers, 29-6 on the road at Carroll. There are three things I've learned never to discuss with people, religion, politics, and the Great Pumpkin. Now we've got uh, no problem discussing the Blue Ridge District, folks. The Eagles hoping to keep their contender status tonight. In Bassett, the Bengals thinking they will be the great pumpkin in the Piedmont patch. And in the Seminole District, can Glass be part of this fall classic plus this? Bassett's band never disappoints. We'll check in with the Bengals football team shortly. But first, the Blue Ridge District and Player of the Week, Jalen Lee, and his Eagles hosting the Colonels tonight down in Rocky Mount. Let's get you to it. Franklin County would start their drive with a fumble. Malachi Coleman would scoop and scamper right here, and he would go the distance for the early Colonel touchdown. That set the tone for this one. Second quarter, Fleming's up 13-0. Franklin County looking to get it going. It's Jalen Lee finding his way into the zone, and it's a 13-7 game. Next drive for the Colonels. We know all about Devin Johnson. That is a designated quarterback run if I've ever seen one. He's blazing through the defense and another Fleming touchdown. Back to Franklin County. It's Kashawn Wright. Little explosion here. How about the reload and the explode? 83 yards for the big touchdown. We've got a 2013 game, but once again, the Colonels able to answer back. Johnson is going to find Lewis English, and that's six more. William Fleming with a huge Blue Ridge District win. 35 to 26. We knew we had to take care of the line of scrimmage. We knew we had to take care of the football. Uh, we knew we had to be great on special teams. And, you know, we didn't do all those things. Um, we did enough to get a win tonight against a tough team. Uh, you know, one of the best quarterbacks that we play, uh, one of the best head coaches, the most disciplined teams that we play. So it's a big win for us. Um, you know, we made plenty of mistakes, and we're going to learn from those and, um, you know, celebrate tonight and, and, and get ready for the next one. Moving on to Lord Botetot at Northside tonight. The Cavaliers looking for a seventh straight win. They're in the red zone first quarter. Jakari nicely spread set. Quarterback draw the C parts 20 yards 7-0 LB. Coach Harless knowing he's got to set up the showdown right in the Blue Ridge District. Here we go up 14-0. This is tailback Tristan Overbay. Nice cutback and he is top gunning. The need for speed 72 yards for six. We've got a 20 one nothing game. It was his second touchdown of the half. LB would score on a defensive touchdown. The Vikings quarterback, Angel Rigney, under a lot of heat right here. We've got a strip sack. Ball is out and bouncing, and it was kicked at that point. Tuck Brookman, scoop, scamper, score, 28 to nothing. Cavs win their seventh straight. They're seven and one, 48 to seven. Your final. Meantime, Stanton River another victory, 19-7 over Bird. And how about Rockbridge in the Valley District taking down Broadway, 21 to 14. Now to Bassett and the Bengals' brutal early schedule, likely to start paying dividends as we approach the postseason. They've got GW. Dan in the house, and it was 
pink out night as they welcome to Bassett Field. All right, the Eagles came out ready to play. Quarterback Nehemiah Cable to Anthony Bronner. Short pass right here. Watch as he turns the corner, turns the Jets on. He's going 57 yards for the score. It's 8 nothing. G-Dub, the ball on the 20-yard line. That's Nehemiah Cable hitting is Sean Myers. It was 16 nothing. We're coming back. Bassett. Uh, this is a nice kickoff return. Branson, LaDuke Maddox picking up the bouncing ball and watch him go. It was 16-7. to As we move to second quarter action, Elijah Stokes to Salvador Coco Lobo, 16-14. Now the Bengals trailed by 22 points, but scored 29 unanswered, including a touchdown in overtime. The D held George Washington, the Eagles, the GW Danville Eagles, in four downs, so it was 50 to 43. Bassett is your final. Meantime, Halifax 42 to 20, and Thursday night, Martinsville was victorious 48 to 14. The Mountain Empire still on a collision course. George With toppled Galax, you recall, in our game of the week. Grayson County remains undefeated. They will meet each other next week. That said, Grayson was at Fort Chiswell tonight. Quick check of them at the home of the Pioneers. Austin Dow connecting to McAllister Gold. First quarter of Grayson County, and then they would cash it in right there. Chase Poole for the touchdown later. It's Dow to Kashawn Phipps. It's 14-0. And then Powell to Kashawn Phipps again, and it's 21-0. The Blue Devils go to 8-0, 31-8 over Fort Chiswell. Galax at Auburn. Of course, Auburn has canceled their season. That is due to numbers and injuries. That said, a Thursday night game, Royal Retreat 45, Northwood nothing. Meantime, Narrows 48 to Eastmont 7 tonight, and the Chargers over the Rockets 42-8. Your final. Covington in what I believe is their final home game. I'll be checking that, but nonetheless, 32 0 over Perry McClure. Of course, they'll be merging with Allegheny over the summer. A person should choose a costume which is in direct contrast to their own personality. That's Lucy. The Pioneers and the Cavaliers are sporting the season's orange and black. That and more when we come back. All right, Dogwood District Showdown tonight in Chatham with Appomattox in. And, yeah, that is the headless Cavalier, I think, maybe. All right, first quarter, high snap. This is DeMonte Fleshman. He's got it left. He finds a hole, and look at him trot on in for the touchdown. I don't think they touched him right there. Very nicely done. Chatham down 14-0. Xander Cornell fakes the handoff, unloads to Thomas Harris. But it's going through his hands and picked by one DeMonte Fleshman. Chatham back in the red zone. Quarterback keepers. Xander Cornell powering in. We've got a 14-7 game. But here comes Reagan Conroy. He's going to drop back and find guess who? Mr. Fleshman again. The catch and he's into the zone. 35-19. Appomattox is victorious. Meantime, Dogwood scores for you. The Wildcats victorious on the road. And the Hawks of Gretna get it done 41 to 19. Eric rejoins us. Check back in the Seminole. And I think multiple teams in this district look like playoff contenders. They do. And they're they all do. just stacked up. And I can't wait to see how this sorts and out. We, and we expect that in the right. SEC of Southwest Virginia, exactly right? What it all is. these teams, you, you simply have to wait till you get to the end and wait till the clock hits zero before you say any of these games are done. With that being said, let's get a check on Rustburg at EC Glass. Teams shaking it up beforehand. George White, a swing pass for the Hilltoppers to Teon Mosby. Look at him go for 27 yards down the field here. They finally catch up with him. Mike Thomas Jr. going to score from five yards out. 7 nothing Glass lead. How about the Red Devils responding? Michael Knight to Amante Thornton. 40 yards down the sidelines. Mm. Before he is caught, it led to a short touchdown. Still a 7-6 Glass lead. Later, more Mike T. Look at him here. Makes two guys miss. Shifts gears. 57 yards to the house. 14-6 EC Glass is on top. Rustburg trying to keep pace. Knight to Thornton. 25 yards down the sideline, but not enough. EC Glass goes on to the 42 to 17 victory. Staying in the Seminole District, Heritage at Jefferson Forest. J.J. Cruz and his offense facing a tall task. Pioneers up 14 to nothing. Rajon Booker Felder 
commits 21 on 21 crime there, 32 wow. yards as he would cap off the drive with a touchdown, a 20 to nothing Pioneers lead. We're still in the third quarter. Jasir Bateman keeping it for himself. Look at this, 27 yards through traffic. Get out of the way. Later, Bateman, a screen pass to Rajon Booker Felder, converting a second and 19 play down the field. He will later add another short score, and Heritage gets the big victory 35 to nothing. Other seminal scores, Brookville over Amherst 28 to 14, and LCA 48 nothing win, still undefeated, and that's their third shutout of the season. All right, thank you, Eric. Meantime, the VISAA, it's North Cross on the road, winning at Fishburne Academy. And the Celtics of Roanoke Catholic taking down Hargrave 44 to 15 today. Guess what? Week nine was a fine show indeed. We're back next week for a Halloween Friday night edition. You don't want to miss that one. We'll see you next week.